Hello everybody, welcome back. Obviously the pause thing did not work. <laughs> well, it actually did work, but there was a power blink and therefore it just cut that video, which I thought, you know, it's, it's probably for the best anyway, because we were already at like an hour and a half. So anyway, this is part two. Uh, we are in the first video. If you haven't watched it, you'll be lost to watching this one. So, But um, we are building a deck. It is Draw by the Banisher. Uh, donated by Derek Salinas. Thank you, Derek. Um, and actually, in the first video, we were just going to build a deck. We didn't know which deck we were going to build, so uh, I don't know. This is my process, if you will, which, as I've said, the master plan is there's no master plan. <laughs> so um, where we're at right now, just to recap, oh, and it's been, uh, it has been three days for me in my time since that stopped because, you know, life. So where we are at is we have got Dromar. Dromar is a 6-6 six, six for 6. Uh, Esper Colors. When it deals combat damage to a player, you may uh, pay 2 and a blue. If you do choose a color, return all creatures of that color to their owner's hands. So the problem here is since Dromar is three colors, white, blue, and black, that if you choose any of those, he's going to bounce himself. So there's that. Um, it looks like we were going with a uh, kind of a bounce kind of theme. I have dissipation field whenever a permanent deals damage to you, bounce it. Whenever a creature becomes the target of a spell or ability, bounce it. Uh, we've got Reflector, Mage, Stormwars, Charm, Shifting Sky. Shifting Sky is a good one. Choose a color, all non-land permits the chosen color. That way, you can choose red or green and be able to bounce everything except for Dromar. All non-land. Nope, that, that doesn't work either because it just bounces everything. It's the bounce of God. Uh, I've not run an evacuation or... Uh, Cyclonic Rift. I don't have an evacuation handy at the time, and y'all know how I feel about Cyclonic Rift. Um, got a good start on lands. It's hard. It's hard to get back into this since uh, we've been bombarded with C20 and with uh, Ikoria spoilers. Uh, but we won't actually get those cards in our hands physically for an another month now from time of recording. So. What we have got here, we have got a lot of mana rocks, so we're probably good there. I see a lot of removal. So we got ramp, we got removal. We ain't got a whole lot of creatures. I like this cowardice, though. I think this cowardice is in. Um, Cowardice, oh, that kind of makes you want to go with Pinkers, doesn't it? Uh, a creature, so that's even your creature too. What if, what if we didn't put any more creatures in the deck? Huh. What do we got? What do we got so far? We got Tidal Visionary, Stormscape Familiar, Reflector Mage, Mana War. All of those do things. Capsize would be pretty cool. But out of those, uh, Is it possible to go creatureless with this deal? I mean, we wouldn't be losing much. But where would the advantage be in creatureless? If I was running a whole bunch of, like, board wipes. I don't think I have a whole bunch of board wipes to run, though. Hmm. So, bounce shenanigans, eh? 
this is the point where I normally I get uh, uh, <laughs> I get stumped, and I'll just scoop it all up, put it in the box, and put it up here in the partially finished ones. And once I have a better idea, I'll come back to it later. Um, but this is also kind of representative of when I'm in the zone, I'm in that deck building zone, and something throws me off. And I get out of the zone. It's hard to, you know, get back into it. Um, white, blue, black. Uh, I don't know if I've used that last intruder alarm. I mean, uh, I've got. Oh no, intruder alarm's not the one here. Uh, Hmm. So what binders have we looked through? Have we looked through uh obviously a reborn uh looking at, at the Esper uh original invasion, which is where Dromar came from, and then Shards of Alara were the two, you know essentially Esper blocks. Um, I do still have like these thought laces and mind bins and I mean we could straight up go color shenanigans. It's hard to push through this. I'll be honest with you because I, I'm, I'm kind of at a blank now. Let's read some of the combos that, or some of the stuff that we've got. A shifting sky makes all non-land permanents the chosen color. So. That's even our stuff. So that opens us up to if we chose green, we could do the green hate stuff. Uh, prevent all damage that would be dealt to a creature by another creature with a shared color. Man of War Ashes. Now warp devotion. This is this is the thing I really want to get behind. Whenever a permit is returned to a player's hand. That player discards a card. So warp devotion, I like. Shifting sky, I like. Dissipation field, whenever permit does damage to you, return it to its owner's hand. That might be good with some weird Triskelion thing where you could take off the two, two counters, pop, pop, and then the third counter you could deal damage to you. And it would bounce the Triskelion. It cost six to recast them. Uh, hmm. Player discards. So we're bouncing hopefully they're discarding it's not a not a given because that's just one card in our deck uh do i have any more tutors i would still want only be two copies um do we look through this do we look through black uh spirit of the night gray purge black normally hates on white and to a lesser extent green. Um, the color shenaniganery though is just I don't know, it's kind of whatever creature attacks, controller loses. Rise from the grave now. Uh, do we have a way to I mean we're in Esper, that's kind of a milling thing as well. Um, 
Unburial Rites is uh, a card we can run because it's white and black, but I don't know that we want to. I mean, technically, we can run most of these, right? Whenever, whenever any creatures dealt damage, destroy it. Death Pits of Wrath. I've always liked that bits of wrath with like pestilence, but those don't really fit here. Um, huh. Probably should have put more thought into this before starting the second video. <laughs> So, in times like this where I get stuck and I am unwilling to, you know, scoop it up and, and move on to the next deck, uh, I, I'll i be honest with you, I grab a binder. I grab a random binder and start looking through it and maybe something will spark me. So, we are bounced. Uh, um. What would be a good random month? Since we've already looked through the Alara block, we've already looked through the Invasion block. Uh, hey, let's grab Time Spiral. Have we done? Did I look through Time Spiral? Seems like I did. You know what? Good old fashioned 10th edition. 10th edition, Bob. Okie dokie. Oh, I'm just messing with my panoramas. Alright, so, oh, this is cool. The first three colors. Uh, defend flying, preventing damage. Uh, do, 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 do. Halo of arrows, not that good. Each creature you control can block an additional creature. It's not going to help us. Roll guard. Loxodon Mystic, tap target creature for one, but it's only one use and it's five mana and it's terrible. Nomad Mythmaker. There's probably an enchantment deck that should have gone in. Um, not seeing anything bouncy or color changey or colors matter thing. That's what we're looking for is either bouncy or color matters academy researchers our graft 10th edition was all about the enchantments wasn't it when Cephalus constable deals combat damage to a player return up to that many target permanents that player controls their owner's hand you know what that fits our theme that's going to go in our maybe pile Uh, clone. I mean, any given time, it's the best creature on the board, right? Um, do, 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 flash freeze. Hating on red or green. Well, that's all permanents become the color, not all spells, so that would be cool. Uh, March of the Machines. By the way, if you've never played March of the Machines, it's amazing. It shuts off all equipment. It's beautiful. If you're ever facing a uh, uh, hardcore equipment deck, March of the Machines will do some work for you. Scaffold Lexus deals combat damage to a player. A player exhausts top four cards of the library. If two or more have the same name, process all that. Man. Yeah. Uh, Angel of Tarkus is enchanted. Telepathy? Huh. Telepathy. You know, I don't know that seeing people's hands it, it, is that really good if you can't do anything about it. Because we're not running, as of yet, we're not running a, a whole ton of counter magic. Now, Tidings. Tidings is five mana for four cards. Now, granted, it is sorcery speed, and we don't, I don't think we have a lot of card draw yet, but that's a, the one and done things. Uh, 
maybe we'll put that in, in the maybe pile. This is why I have a whole box of, of cards that need to be sorted. It's because I'm like, ah, oh, we might put this in. Yeah, I'm already running an unsummon. Return target permanent you control. No. I mean about that life. Okay, we're into black. Uh, Death mark. Green or white creature for one mana. Why do I love Death Mark so much, but not the Counterspell one? Hmm. I'm thinking hardcore about that. Okay. Death Mark's a maybe. It's one mana removal, 40% of the time. Uh, do, 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 do. Hidden Horror comes in play, sacrifice unless you discard. Uh, target opponent puts the top, puts the cards from his or hand on top of your library. Search that player's library for that many cards. The player puts those cards. Oh, so you get to pick their hand. Head games. You get to make somebody a new hand. That is the most political thing I've ever heard of. That's a maybe. Just, I mean, Megram, opponent discards, they take two. So, uh, I mean, that would go well with Warp Devotion, but we don't have a dependable way to get Warp Devotion online. Uh, Ravenous Rats, Recover. Terror. Uh, I mean, it ain't. It ain't Doom Blade. I do kind of like that Terrace is non black, that it references a color, because that's kind of our theme. Uh, now let's jump back here to artifacts. Uh, whenever a player plays a white spell, you may gain a life. Huh. All the charms. Sand and basic lands. Anything else back here? No. Okie dokie. Well, 10th edition may have been good for a couple cards. Uh, do we keep going with the core sets or. Do, 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 do. Uh, we'll do one more and see how, how it goes because this was the beginning of the um, I'm not going to call the modern age of core sets because they stopped and then restarted but M10 so this was the first core set to have half new cards half reprints so maybe I, I have more enchantresses? Wow. Uh, I mean, I, I guess I could have done this Esper in, enchantments, but uh, got a planar cleansing. I don't know that I want to blow up all my artifacts and enchantments, of which we have a bunch. So we probably will skip out on that board wipe. Um, so we're ain't going to do it for us. Uh, silence is great if you have a stick to put it on. Uh, clone again. Uh, Divination, three mana, two cards. Oh, there's so much better rates, though. There's that Flash Freeze again. Uh, jump. Mind Control, another R. Mind Spring. That's a decent draw card. I, I mean, yeah, it's sorcery speed, but put that in the maybe pile. Uh, sleep. Dang telepathy. Traumatize. Uh, 
kind of like the snowflake death mark a little better. This one hurts me to look at. Haunting Echoes. Man, I wish that worked better in EDH. Mind Shatter. Oh, yeah. Nightmare's not a fit. There's a Sign in Blood. It's two mana, two cards. Yeah. Underworld Dreams. Three specific is a thing in a three color deck. Uh, we're not really forcing draws though, so. Roll Assassin could keep people without vigilance honest. Back to. It wasn't a whole lot in this one, was there? I think we'll do something. We'll get off of course that's now and go to something weird and random. Hey, Kamigawa! Kamigawa was one of, it's not one of my favorite sets at all, but it is a set where if I'm really looking to find something obscure that a lot of people haven't seen, I'll typically go to Homelands or to Kamigawa. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ethereal Haze. Ethereal Haze could do some work. Uh, I mean, we're not. Maybe. Uh, let's see. Maybe play a Spirit of Arcane. Man, there was a whole lot of that. A lot of this block is just so parasitic. It only kind of plays with itself and and helps itself out. But every now and then you get something like a Reciprocate, which is really good. Exile target creature that damaged you. Still lacking on removal, so we may may include that. Return target creature to its owner's hand. And it has splice into arcane. We'll look through and see if there's enough arcane cards to counsel Sore Tommy again. Three for two. Uh, I am nowhere. It's a sorcery speed boomerang, but it's arcane. I think we have to do it just because it's another copy of boomerang. Is there anything else on my page that I missed? Uh, no. Eerie procession. Search your library for an arcane card. Reveal it, put it into your hand. Depends on how, how arcane we go. Uh, shrine. Nine or more cards in hand. Part the Veil. I feel like I have to run Part the Veil because it fits our theme. Even though it's Return All Creatures You Control. I feel like that's um, general protection. It is an instant. I guess that card would be horrible if it was a sorcerer. I mean, it's not amazing now. We can spend three mana and return three lands to bounce a creature. I think we can find a better rate than that. Oh, it is early in the morning. Uh, right now, it's not even 5.30 in the morning yet. So, time stop. Oh, you're done? No, that wasn't a question. You're done. <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't think black did a whole lot of bounce or color matters in Kamigawa. Yeah, most of the decks are uh, 
built from, you know, what I have. Uh, destroy target spirit, destroy target non-spirit. The non-spirit's actually pretty good. But it is a three man. I mean, murder is a little better. Swallowing plague deals X damage to target creature and you gain X life. X black black. No, I think we can we can find better ways there too. Anything in colorless? Because I don't think there was a whole lot of multicolor in this set. Uh, Shaku. Players can't untap more than one artifact. Hmm. That could hurt us. Ooh, arcane spells cost one less. Spirits get bigger. Uh, whenever you draw a card, remove the top card of your library from the game. Player would draw a card. Nope. Okay, so. Y'all know what's next, right? Where are you at, Homeland? Way back over here. Okay. Homelands, folks. Yes. How many <laughs> how many people you know got a homelands binder? Uh this was back when they used to do multiple arts. It's like this is the same card, but they have two arts. Uh Eyes and Crusaders power and toughness equal to two plus number of heroes you control. All white creatures gain Planeswalk for the low, low price of six mana on enchantment. Uh, let's see. Raksha can... I've got more Rakshas I need to put in here. They're in the to-be-sorted box. Reveal the top card of target opponent's library to all players. If it's a land, gain one life. That opponent then shuffles the li that library. Draw a card at the next upkeep. Super weird. Uh... Ether Storm. No summon spells may be cast. Any player may pay four life to bury this. You know, for creatureless, it's not bad, but in a 40 life format, that's terrible. Sure, I'll pay four. I mean, we pay four life, not even thinking about it. Sylvan Library taught us that. Chain Stasis. Tap or untap target creature, and you can spend three to keep bouncing it. Now, if it was sack something to keep bouncing it, that'd be sweet. Target land becomes the basic land type of your choice until end of turn. And then you draw a card. Marjan, memory lapse is a good one. All creatures lose flying and island walk. Whenever Reef Pirates damages, is that take the top card of the library? Oh, yeah. Okay, we're into black. Just, there's Mr. Baron Singier. Uh, buried to. Oh, it's five mana for a kill spell. Can't. I just can't go there. Uh, using shit. Costume Falls. Now, this. This is a card that a lot of people, I don't know that they know, exists. It's the um, the black version of Propaganda or Ghostly Prison. Now, it is an enchant world, so there's, there's that. You can only have one enchant world on the battlefield at once. But during your upkeep, tap an untapped creature you control or bury this. That's your upkeep cost. Uh, and then no creature can attack you unless it's controller pays an additional two. But yeah. Don't let that reserve list sticker scare you. Uh, it's still, uh, I, I want to say it's not crazy expensive. I say that. I have never, ever, ever traded or bought one. These are the ones that I pulled from Homelands packs way, way, way back. So I can't tell you what they're worth. To me, a card's a card, you know. Uh, yeah, there are some that are, we know are, but value doesn't like. Oh man. See, Castle Singear had like some of the best art that there was, but man, that abilities. Ooh, that was kind of rough. If 
Perils is banned, we can make all creatures cost two more. Or if we're just, you know, super scared of Homelands cards. Yeah, Homelands was a swing and a miss. Uh... Okay, sure. Ice Age. Ice Age has some cool stuff, right? Other than giving us snow covered and then making it impossible to play snow covered. Enduring Renewal. Boy, there's a combo tastic card. We don't really have a way to abuse it, though. Uh, well, we are in three colors. We could find a way, I guess. Um, let's see. Lightning Blow. Tarkers against First Strike. Draw a card. Now, the Order of the Sacred Torch here. Pay one life to counter a black spell. That may be where we need to go to fill out the rest of this deck is... Um, like slot of mine type effects and color hosers. Huh. That's a maybe. The whole actual idea is maybe, so we'll put that in the maybe, maybe pile. <laughs> All right. Binding grass, clairvoyance. Arsenal's Ascent. Uh, Hydro Blast, counter target spell if it's red. Or destroy target permanent if it's red. Oh my gosh. That goes in our color. You know, I, the more I think about it, the more that, that may be the way. Um, because his thing is all about colors apparently uh, or at least that's what we're making it about I love shift shifts the four two you can just make any color combination of colors you want to it's all good uh, the original ray of command a lot of mine which which slot of mine do we like better uh I love the original, don't get me wrong, but I think we'll use the uh, Ice Age. I'll put that back over there in the to-be-sorted box. Because uh, I don't think I've used the Ice Age yet. Wrath of Merit Lage comes into play. Tap all red creatures. Red oh, man, that that's going to be so good if we go the color. It's kind of looking like we're going to. Um... There's a demonic consultation. There's a bunch of demonic consultations. Uh, does that help us? No, no, it doesn't help us at all. I mean, it's good, but unless we have a way of setting it up, it could one mana lose us the game. Uh, Gravevine. I put together years ago, I put together a whole bunch of actual Ice Age sets because I would like put together a set and then trade it for like a Mox or whatever. Um, and Gravebind was always the last card. In my little geographic area, Gravebind was the card that I... Man, it was hard to find. Uh, Infernal Denison, what do you do? Eight mana, five, seven. That During your upkeep, sacrifice two swamps. You know what? I don't even want to keep reading. Uh, during your upkeep, Limdul's Hex deals one damage to each player. Each player may play black or three to prevent the one damage. I thought that was a anti-green thing because Limdul typically didn't like the green. Uh, oh, Ice Age had multicolor, didn't it? 
Let's see what multicolored goodness Ice Age had in our three colors. What about glaciers? Uh, during your upkeep, pay white, blue, or destroy glaciers. All mountains become plains. I think that's just funny. Uh, but we're hating on mountains. Really, that's good. It is one of... If we were enchantments, I'd probably be all about that. Essence Vortex. Bury target creature unless that creature's controller pays life equal to its toughness. Oh, fire cut that's so sweet. Um, yeah, there's nothing on that page that's even legal for us. Uh, or that one. The Splat Stick. We can destroy our own stuff. Sometimes as humans, that's what we do. Uh, elk and bottle, take card from your graveyard or library, place it for face. Uh, do we play it for free? You may play Zoe in your hand now. Jeweled amulet, every other turn, it's a mox. Right? No, because you got to put a man into it. Uh, Shield of Ages is so good with Force Field. God, I did that so many years. Until Force Field got too expensive to keep. And then... What kind of snow covers I have left? Oh, just like a single snow covered swamp. My LGS has a stack of snow covers from various editions. And I, I have been... I've been looking at it for years now. I, I haven't quite pulled the trigger on it yet. Uh, I don't know. It's hard. Uh, does, uh, I don't know why I grabbed this one. It's, it's kind of that crazy. Uh, oh, yeah, it's not the one I thought it was. This is the uh, I don't know. That Sphinx of the Steel Wind is our three colors. And you know what? Pro red, pro green, if we go the color route, we might need it. And it's a beater. Okay, hereby, we are going the color route. So let's move back up over here. <laughs> over here. Yeah, I know you weren't meant to do that, camera, but you're going to. Uh, so, that is a, oh wow, that's an 8 drop. Oh, come on. So, Wrath of Merit Lage is in. Uh, Slot of Mind is in. Hydro Blast is in. Order of the White Tor, the Sacred Torch, is. Do we uh, do we care about like um, hack things like changing the land types? I don't know what we do. Uh, I have nowheres in because we like that redundancy, even if it is sorcery speed. Reciprocate is uh, quasi decent removal. Uh, Mind Spring is our card draw. It is a rare, and why is that not pro fitted? And why you still can't see half of what I'm doing? Um, okay, let's get up and do this. Don't fall. There we go. Oh, uh, yeah, Mind Spring. See, uh, t t when I'm building a deck, uh, as I do t with casting cost, I, for some reason, the X spells in my mind always glow, go in the six 
CMC slot because most of the time that's what they end up getting, you know, cast for is X equals four or whatever. Head games. I forgot what that does. Oh yeah, that's a super political thing. I think we just pulled it out because it was fun. The death mark is in the Cephalid Constable. Uh, does combat damage to a player return? Eh. It'd be really cool if we had a way to pump this. Uh, we have Slot of Mind. We also need Mind Bend. It changes a color word. Now there was a... Seems like there was a Tempest one. A Tempest color changing one? That had um, oh uh, buyback. Uh, I I don't know which on top of my head if it was Tempest Stronghold or Exodus. So I guess we'll look at the Tempest binder next. Uh, we'll have so many binders to put up after this. Uh, This looks familiar. Oh no, Ice Age had a, all of those uh, prevent all damage you from one source buyback. Uh, anything that has anything to do with colors with buyback? Buyback is so good. Oh, I love that mechanic. I understand why they, you know, haven't done it again because, well, I haven't done it a bunch. Um, it is really good. Whenever target opponent successfully cast a green spell, draw a card. We can slide that to whatever we want. Steel enchantment. Target creature gains shadow. Draw a card. It's an instant speed. If y'all need a way to get a, a creature through, Shadow Rifter will be there for you. See, I don't know if it was in this set or if I... Oh, oh, Whim of Volrath. Change the text of target permanent by replacing all instances of one color word or one basic land type with another until end of turn. Buy back to Whim of Volrath. It's my last copy. It's in. So now we are all about uh, bouncing and color matter. We're still we're, we're still the same place, right? <laughs> uh, Diabolic edict. Uh, I mean, I I know it's uh, way better in uh, sixty card competitive formats one versus one because typically you put one creature out and ride it but um it's good against voltron strategies as long as you can target the player i don't know i feel like we're kind of light on removal but it does give your opponents the choice but there's a lot of times they just only have one creature it's maybe Uh, destroy two. No, I prefer the ashes to ashes that exiles them. Um, Tempest also had a pretty good color or uh, multicolor section. Lobotomy, man, I love that card, but it's about useless in our our format. Uh, well, I mean, what ninety seven percent of the time it's useless. Um, booby trap with 10 damage cold storage is neat like that with uh, comes into play creatures and whatnot. I have a grindstone I still have a painter servant if I had a painter servant to work with Romar it would totally uh, yeah I'd totally be grinding it out 
just no real way to you know tutor it out or anything. Just if it happens, it happens. I guess I I could play the grindstone and and make them scared of the painter servant. That may make an unnecessary target out of me. Probably would. So I think we'll leave the stone in there until I can find a better use for it. Uh, what do we got over here? How about Stronghold, uh, the expansion of Tempest, had uh, some buyback stuff in it as well. And it was far enough back where they had uh, decent color hate, or in that era anyway. Um, I guess for the best color hate, I need to go to Revise, don't I? Back to Revise, because I think we already looked through that binder. This is not helping a lot. During each player, no, I want it to be opponents. Some whole taskmaster slideable. Anything here? Oh, just the just the multicolor slivers is all. Whenever any creature comes into play, if there are two or more other creatures, set that creature aside. If Port Close leaves play, put the creatures into play under its owner's control. That locks out everything but the creatures that are on the board, because, you know, by the time you play it, there's going to be two creatures, or five, or eight, 20, you know. Uh, is that enough? Is that enough to boss a little bit of time? I think it may be. This Porcolis like a permanent version of a board white, maybe? Uh, maybe. Crazy things have happened, right? Uh, and we're going to finish out the Tempest block with Exodus. Uh, I'm telling you, man, I really love Tempest. Uh, I know the Prost Bloom thing happened. Supposedly that was accidental, but uh, each creature can blow. What was that? Oh, here's a uh, limited resources. This card's banned in Commander, and it should be. Whoa, it's crazy. Uh, reconnaissance. Let's read Dromar. Deals combat damage. There is a point in time. The reason why Reconnaissance is so good is that there is a point in the combat phase where your creature has already dealt damage, but it is still an attacking creature. That is when you, that's why, you know, everybody's breaking into reconnaissance is because at that point, then you pull your creature back after they've already dealt their damage. Uh, choose a card from your hand, prevent all source from a black or red source. I don't think we're about that life. Because uh, it's not a permanent, or well, I mean, it is a permanent, but we don't want to. Now, fade away. For each creature, that creature's controller pays one or sacrifices a permanent. That's important. It's not sacrifice that creature. They can sacrifice anything else and then come get you with those creatures. Um, we got a Whisper Silk for... Uh, but that's just one. 
You know, we still don't have a whole lot of card draw. Well, there's treasure trove, right? <laughs> oh, it's good to get something back. Calling of the week sacks. Uh, nothing here for colors or bouncing. Uh, Spike Cannibal gets all the counters. All the well, all the plus one counters. Memory Crystal. Buybacks are, are reduced. No Bridge is such a great card. Um, four to cast, two to tap. Uh, you, you, you spend two, tap, you discard your hand to counter a non-creature spell. In colors like um, to where you're constantly hellbent, you don't have a hand anyway. Kind of. Kind of a little on the good side. Uh, so that concludes Tenth of Block. Uh, I don't know. What is this Modern Horizons thing? It was literally like on the shelf right above it, so that's why. <laughs> that's the randomness it was chosen in. Okay, so we're looking for colors and bounce. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. If it was kicked, draw two cards. No thanks, I'm good. There's an Astral Drift. That may be a, a thing, right? Whenever you cycle, cycle another card. Uh, ooh, that's a shiny one too. Uh, that's probably that's probably going to inhabit a, a, a commander deck from the new stuff here before too long. You gain Shroud in a turn. Mm. Some of this set was... Uh, just so amazing and some of it was very very underwhelming you know uh, whenever a creature you control becomes blocked you may return it to its owner's hand I like that I like that a lot but what are we using it for Manowar only uh, Works great with Mana War, though. <laughs> or Mana War type cards. Cunning Evasion. Hmm. But if Dromar is our, our thing, and that's what we have to do, is attack with Dromar, we're not always going to have that Whisper Silk. So we're going to put Cunning Evasion out there as a maybe. Uh, let's see. Snow permanence. See, they even gave us the combo of Man of War. Uh, Phantom Ninja. I'm going to build the all unblockable deck one day. What is that? Black and blue? Probably. I know a lot of people build ninjas that way. Uh,. So snow enchantment on into black. We got changelings. We got convoking. This set was very reminiscent of like the time spiral ish block, you know. Uh, That is the chosen. Choose a creature type. Creature of the chosen type. Get one one. Um. You know what? Etchings of the chosen. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and put this up on the shelf, uh, or up here somewhere. Because General Kudro is gonna need that. I really feel like it. Uh. Fallen Shinobi, that player accelerated. Nope. Still not caring about colors. 
All the creatures exiled from the battlefield. This gets counter. Oh, squirrel tokens. So what do you think about these art cards? Yeah, cool and different. Uh, did it make the pack go from worth being worth four dollars to being worth eight dollars? Yeah, probably not. Or are we bouncing in colors? Uh, seems like 8th edition had some. Now I know, I know 8th edition is completely and totally 100% reprints. But I, I believe 8th edition was kind of the last, you know. Dang it. How many times have we passed by these circles of protection so far? We're doing color matters. I don't know that we want to do like all of them. How many? Uh, wow. I mean, that's really good. And when's the last time you've seen somebody play Circles of Protection, right? Um... I think the two enemy colors, red and green. But to be honest with you, I think we can come up with better arts. Uh, come on, revise. How about... We got this far into a Color Matters deck and hadn't, uh, hadn't even thought about circles. Because we can slide those to whatever color happens to be the dominant color at the table. And it, it's the reason why I chose the circles over the runes in, um, I mean, I guess in theory we could run both. But the runes in, in Saga and there's a block uh, have to have white mana to activate. This these you can do with colorless. Demystify marks an enchantment, uh, but enchantment only. Sometimes I run it, sometimes I don't. It's a maybe. What we'll to count our removal suite? Uh, man, those circles kind of. Kind of got me spinning now. Whenever a spell or an ability an opponent controls causes a land to be put from your graveyard into play, return it. Whenever opponent taps a mountain for mana, oh, you gain a life, that's it? Well, maybe not. Spirit Link? I got, I got Spirit Links? I think I was looking for a Spirit Link the other day. Uh... Boomerang, wipe order. That's kind of the greatest part about the old old core sets is I, I love me some wipe order. Curiosity, boy, that I have how many of those left? I have three. Those are probably all getting used in <laughs> uh, Ooh, what about hibernation? Three mana instant return all green permanents to their owner's hands. I think we got to do it. There's a mana leak. I mean, it ain't arcane denial, but as of yet, we don't have any. Mana leak's just so subjective in our, our format, though. Merchant Scrolls. Search your library for a blue instant card. Reveal that card. Put it into your hand. Is that um, Wim of Volrath, the buyback select, is an instant? I think we got to have that. Mind Bend. Change the text of target permanent by replacing all instances of one color word with another. Or Oh, yeah, that's the either or. I'm 
enough redundant effects, right? A shifting sky comes in. Oh, I think we already got shifting sky, don't we? Oh, uh, was it cost three? Stack those up like a crazy man. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, got it. Got the. Do we want the black border? Or do we want the uh, the white border? I think we'll just take the one we, we've already got out. Uh, Wrath of Merit Lage we've already got. Death Pits. Still good. Destroy target green creatures. Eastern Paladin worth it. Four mana tree tree. Hmm. Black, black. And then black, black to activate. I don't know that we're there yet. We may not get there either. Uh, Form of Rest is one that needs to be in most rat decks. That's for sure. Warp Devotion. Oh, yeah. We've already got the Warp Devotion. It's just a different art. Any artifacts that matter back here? Uh, Aladdin's Ring. For the low, low price of 8 to cost and 8 to tap, we could deal 4 damage. Hey, don't laugh. Sometimes. I have run that card. Target player names a card and reveals the top card of his or the library. If it's a name card, the player puts it in their hand. Otherwise, the player puts it in their graveyard and takes two damage. So I think now, I think what we'll do is we will look at these cards that I fooled out here and see where we're at. Mind Bend, Merchant Scroll, let's profit that Hibernation. Hibernation, the, the, the three drop stack is it, it is a bunch. Circle green. Circle red. I, I still kind of like that portcullis, though. You know what I'm saying? The portcullis being uh, kind of a creature protection. Diabolic Edict, some removal. Uh, insight. This card draw. And I think now is where we look at. We got to do some card counting because we haven't. We did our our uh, non basics, and we know we're probably going to play thirty seven, maybe thirty eight. It's three colors, and I mean it's three colors. We don't have a hell of a lot of ramp. Uh, so let's go 38, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so there's 38 lands, right? 38, 39, 44, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 4, 5, 6, 7, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65. 6, And then draw more. Okay, so we've got lands and eight cards left. 
kind of almost feel like we still don't have a dang win condition. But, uh, lands. There is a, an actual um, formula to use in your... Uh, lands as far as uh, how many if you're building a draft deck or whatever um, these are all ones okay and, and what's formally is it, it's a pretty basic fraction uh, the top of the uh, the bottom of the fraction is your total mana cost or, or, or I'm sorry the total colored mana pips in your mana cost right and then the top of each fraction is here we're playing three colors. Uh, how many of them are blue? How many of them are white? How many of them are black? So, and then that fraction tells you uh, uh, you divide it out what percentage of your lands needs to produce that color. And now that doesn't help you on how many lands to run. It doesn't. So once you decide how, how many lands you're going to run, that's when you apply that. Like we're going to run 38. And, but I have been doing this so long. I can pretty well eyeball it. Um, this is a blue deck that just happens to have some white and a, some a little bit of black in it, which kind of makes me question that dark ritual. If it wasn't just colorless ramp, you know. So we're going to go dominantly blue. Um, let's get some white. Some blue and some black. Do we want white borderlands? Do we have enough white borderlands to do? Uh, three color deck, yeah, I probably do. I probably don't have enough to do a, a mono color anymore. But I might be shy on the blue. At least it's easy to pick out, right? Uh, and then there's the white ones. Now, um, not sure how many of y'all have played competitive formats. Uh, I'm not. Uh, but it is kind of one of those tricks that I know about uh, is that what led me to white border lands is we have all these fetches uh well i say all the cheap fetches you know terramorphic evolving stuff like that so if all of our basics are um white border at as we're going through the deck it's a lot quicker to pick out and anything that makes searching and shuffling in commander quicker is better so I'm going to say that we are, because these are my sleeves that I've got, probably, we're going to be two to one. So for every one, and we're heavier in white than we are in black, but, so we'll do two islands, a plains, a swamp. Two islands. And to be honest with you, I think we may be getting too many. Because I know I'm probably going to run. I know I'm going to run four of each, at least. Four planes. Well, these are revised planes. And then four. I just pulled them randomly from the land box. I love that art. I think that art should have been used for like a uh, bad moon or something. Oh. And then uh, maybe one more of each before we go hog wild on the uh, islands. Right? And then I think the rest of these are just islands. Let's try to do this left handed. Oh, that felt weird. OK, 
got all kinds of weird islands in here. Revised seven. Well, that seven edition full stuff is crazy now. Was it one more seven? Call me crazy, but let's lose that revised for that last seventh edition item. Okay, so we can put up our white, blue, black. We have our land base. Now, in that formula, dual lands kind of throw a kink in all that. So, so we have, we are eight cards away from finishing a, a deck with no win condition. Besides our commander dealing combat damage, right? So, uh, uh, and we don't have decent removal. Have I used that, uh, what was that? Uh, the guild kits. Uh, I guess three guilds. Um, it seems like there was a board wipe in each one with the guild kits. Oh, let's grab the guild kit binder. We're going to go ahead and put these lands in the box. Okay, so we're looking at guild kits. Uh, so the first one we got is blue black, so we're in that. But I've like <laughs> I've been through this binder a couple of times. Exile target creature from a graveyard. Yeah. Then we got red blue, which we can't use. Then we got green black, which we can't use. Red white, no green. So we move over to the other guild kit, which is Azorus. Creatures you control gain life link, or draw a card, or put target attacking or blocking creature on top of Thomas Library. Huh. It doesn't do anything that we want to do. Uh, Pride of the Clouds. Render Silent. I mean, yeah. Could use some fancy guild lands. Uh, the Signet. I think we've already got that Signet. Now we're on White Black. Destroy Target Monocolor Creature. That card just keeps every. Yeah, it just keeps getting worse. Desperately hoping for a. Yeah, I think there's no point in hoping for green. Is it? Okay, so the guild kit. Uh, I already used some cool guild kit cards, evidently. Um, what about that uh, From the Vault series? Well, it used to be the From the Vault series. Now it's the Spellbook series. So. I mean, we got Worship, Rest in Peace, Martyr Spawn, Gideon. That was the white one. Do we like that blue elemental blast better than the one we got? I don't know, I think the one we got is revised. Uh, what is this from the vault? Lore. Uh, new death experience from the vault exiled from the vault relics from the vault 20. I think that's it. I don't think, oh, yeah, from the vault board wipes upheaval. How is that damn card even still legal? Is it legal? May not be. Straight up fits the theme, though. 
Is there a way to make an insane amount of mana with this deck? And then maybe like. I don't think I'm going to run upheaval simply because I can't I can't cast upheaval and then win the game. I can cast upheaval to prolong the game to where it keeps going and I just keep you know bashing people with a six six, but um, that would take so long. And a lot of times upheaval upheaval is just going to get you. Straight concessions, anyway. Let's look at our latest corset, shall we? We got uh, corset 2020. Okay. Protection from black. Hmm. You know, keep running across this planar cleansing. And I don't know. There we're gonna grab one just because there may be, you know, we might get out creature or out artifacted and out enchantmented, right? Ether Gust. Choose target spell or permanent that's red or green. Put it on the top or the bottom of their library. And it's a color hate card. We're not going to have a lot of removal. Although I, I guess the, the actual doing of the thing that we're wanting to be doing is removal. I mean, it's, it, it's bouncing. No, we need words. Uh, I don't know if that's a thing that we don't really have a whole lot of flyers or a whole lot of creatures for that matter. Uh, creatures your opponent's control can't have 1-1 one -one counters put on them. And it has protection from green. That's going to... Whoa. That like hates on a whole set of I Ikoria. It's just one one counters it, it hates on. But like Hydras, all the Hydras that are going to come out of. And it has Pro Green. It does not further the cause. It, I mean, it's a two mana one one. Oh, uh, it's not. I think it's right for this deck. So we're going to pass it. I think after I finish this deck, I got, you know what? That's murder. I know it's double black. We already have one. I stacked all these jokers together. Which kind of defeats the whole purpose, doesn't it? Nope, don't have a murder. I know it's double black, but I feel like we got to have a murder. Double black doesn't really scare me much in one or two color decks, but I, I, it is something I, I consider in a three color deck. Um, I don't instantly throw it all out, you know, but uh, an Empyrean Eagle, to which we could go with the whole flying matter thing since our commander flies. Um, mm, was that a thing? Might be a thing. Choose a color whenever you cast a spell of the chosen color. Put a one, one counter on it. Uh, that that's mono color, really, is what it needs. Um, full key, meteor golem. 
Meteor Gold is one of those cards you kind of look at and you go, huh, do I need it? Prismite. Do, yeah, we're, we're done with the lands. But this is, we're not done with M20 because it's got the weird stuff at the end. Uh, we don't have a Yangling Planeswalker. Uh, okay, right. None of these cards are like. These are the learn to play cards or whatever. Whenever Riddle Master Sphinx enters the battlefield, you may return target creature and opponent controls its owner's hand. I think we already have that one. Do we not? That's six mana. We do not have that one. We need Riddle Master Sphinx. That is a rare. I'm not exactly certain why I don't already have it profited. But I do now. Do we need tokens? I don't think we've made any tokens. I, I like to include tokens in whatever the deck makes, you know, in inside the deck box. Uh, don't always do it. Sometimes I forget. M20 wasn't bad. That got us four of our eight. Uh, we're just going to corset this thing up, I, I guess. Uh, we'll skip back. Uh, I think 19, 19 and 20 were a lot of lives. So we're going to skip back to M16 for Origins, as it were. Origins. What we got? What we got? Whenever you cast it, this is a great card. It's scary art. Uh, let's see. We're not. I think this may have been the period of time where they were like, ooh, we don't want to do color hate. I think we're just going to do color annoy. Because uh, color hate was real back in the day. Uh, and that may be. That may be where these last four cards need to go. I may need to pull back out that fourth edition binder and uh, let the hate flow. Oh, you know what? Oh, we're putting in putting in the magical hack. Where's the magical hat? Yep, yep, yep. All right, so uh, let's see. Let's put this binder up. Come on, tell me I have a magical hat. We're gonna fourth edition would be the most obvious place I would have it. Come on, magical hat, magical hat. Oh, I got magical hat. Raw, not even perfect. Uh, okay. Here's a read. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Uh, I'm in that moment. Uh, so here's the reason why Magical Hack, all right? Because we're not playing with Herborg Tomb of Yon Moth. But if somebody else is, <laughs> Magical Hack. Kind of ruins their fun. Um, let's see, Magical Hack. We got these uh, Riddle Master Sphinx at six, Murder at three, which uh, Ether Gust at two, Plenty of Cleansing at six. Three cards. Um, I feel like a white hate, a blue hate, and a black hate, right? My fourth edition binder has seen better days. Like the whole front cover of it's off. Uh, 
Okay. Well, can't run balance. Now, Angry Mob. Total number Swanson play, right? Uh, all mountains become basic planes. During your upkeep, pay double white. No, I don't want to do that. The wards, like Green Ward, uh, all, all the wards we could put on our commander and they couldn't be blocked by creatures of that color. Wait a minute. Okay, so there's a prismatic ward in like Mirage that you choose the color, but it doesn't have the color word printed on there, so it's not slidable. Um, I still think prismatic ward's better in that instance. And it helps give our commander evasion. Uh, is, it Mir is it Mirage? I think it's Prismatic Ward or Prismatic Lace. Prismatic Lace I don't have. Was it, was it maybe Tempest? It's back there, but it's it's not a big enough thing for me to go down to three cars. Put on my blast. Man, energy flux hating on artifacts. Hating on artifacts with energy flux. Uh, life tap each time I pour it now. Nah. You know, flood. Flood's not bad. Tapping creatures. Mahamadi. There's our slide if we just want a fourth edition slide. Unsummon twiddles up here. Oh my gosh. Look at Death Grip. That's one. Counter target green spell for black black. Oh, it's permanent. It's an enchantment. You just play black black. There's one. We can slide that to whatever. That's a gloom. Now we're not going to play gloom because it starts off hosing us before we draw our thing. So we're just not even going to try with gloom. I don't think there were any artifacts of color merit. By the way, here's a card I want to show you all. Why every Boros deck in the world is not running this, I don't know. It's Sunglasses of Urza. Uh, I don't know where it's going to... Well, I've got it on manual. Alright, it says uh, you may use white mana... In in your mana pool as either white or red mana. Granted, it doesn't do anything by itself. It doesn't tap for anything. So, there's that. Uh, oh, wow. Times is hard when we get the 5th edition binder out. I say that because I'm really not a 5th edition fan. Because they started jacking with all the classic arts, you know. Uh, there's a circle artifact. Uh, I don't know if we scared that much of artifacts. Uh, that's a greater realm of preservation. That's a uh, circle black red together. That's why it costs double to activate. Karma. Is 
that's more land hate than color hate. We don't have as much land. I mean, we could just do like pro black creatures, but I don't think that's I don't think that's the way. Anti magic aura put on our commandor. Uh, come back to that flood, man. Oh. Just being able to tap a creature. Oh, that's a creature without flying. Never mind. We want to tap creatures with flying. Memory lapse is a hard counter. But we're already this far. And I don't think we have any. I think we're going to. Well, unless they're playing red, we got the blast. Okay. And that's a hardcore looking dark ritual. I already got the death grip. Seems like there was other stuff like death grip. Oh, green had one that was life grip or life whatever. Yeah. We're not in green, so we can't. Can't go that route. Fifth edition has been a total wash. Nothing. Do we need Urza Lands? Probably not. Uh, Millstone. Obelisk of Undoing. No. You control and own? No. Oh, we need two more cards. Uh, a good. See, that's the problem about continuing to go through the core sets because they were so largely the same every time. Okay, so we're two cards. We're going to come back to uh, our death grip because that's, man, that's really good to slide a mind to whatever color you want it to be. But really, it's already green. Um, that may, so we got two left. And then we come to our maybe pop. Our maybe pile thus far is Demystify. Coming invasion, whenever creature you control becomes blocked, you return it to its owner's hand. Uh, I would say no because we're not running as many creatures. No. Tidings. I, I think we got to have the tidings just simply because we're so lacking on card draw. Yes, there are better card draw spells. Uh, Cephalic Constable, Part the Veil, Ethereal Haze kind of gained stock with me simply because we don't have a, uh, yeah, all the laces and the, those I can just automatically DQ. So we're down to five. Part the Veil. I don't think part of the veil is real good. It saves all your own creatures. To be honest with you, we don't have a lot. We have our, our commander. That's what we're trying to win off of. Uh, Cephalid Constable deals combat damage to a player, return it to that many permanents. Uh, it's just a 1 1. We have no way of pocket. Head games. Target opponent puts the. Oh, yeah, it's where you give somebody a whole new hand. I really like that. You know what? I think it's going to be head games. For nothing else, we get to look through somebody's library. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we have a deck. Um, so we will put those in there. Dromar on top. Where's my label maker at? Over. Yeah. And this will be deck. Uh, 562. Well, I do appreciate uh, any of y'all that still have, you know, been watching through both of these. This is a two hour and a half long videos. Uh, three hours to build a deck. I Is that average? I don't know. Uh, it may be for some, some of them I, I've built really quick, you know, when I, I just know that I have all up of the stuff. So we're going to try to do this right here and we're going to try to, oh, <laughs> my, uh, <laughs> it wasn't meant to do that, but it's good to know that, uh, it can be moved around and stuff. But I need to point this down where it's not on the. Yeah, I've been doing some remodeling and stuff and uh, yeah, kind of junk everywhere. But uh, yeah, together we built 562 Dromar. Thank you very much, Derek. Uh, Finally got them. By the way, uh, for those of y'all who um, uh, are wanting to send cards or whatnot, that previous address that you saw a while back, not valid anymore. Um, I need to get me like a P.O. box or something like that so that uh, I can just put in the link below and what have you. Uh, but as of yet, it's hard to do anything like that because, you know, getting out and stuff is people weird um but anyway i, I do appreciate y'all watching uh thank y'all so much thank you Derek, uh for the cards you sent uh had not actual plan to build this deck if y'all saw from the first video uh i just sat down and we were like we're gonna build a deck but that's more or less how the process goes and i even like the fact that it it had that three-day break in there uh, although it won't be a three-day break for y'all because you're probably going to watch the first one and immediately watch the second one because I'm going to release them both at the same time. Uh, so, because that's how I normally do it. I'll, I'll start it and then, you know, mentally check out or whatever. How, most of the time what happens is I get another idea for a different deck and I'm like, ooh, 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 ooh. So, you know, the new shiny, you know how it is. Uh, so, that's uh that's the process. I won't drag on any longer. Uh, I appreciate y'all watching. Just want to thank thank you, Derek. Thank y'all for watching. Thank all the patrons. Thank y'all so much. Without all of y'all, couldn't do it. Um, and uh, I, I guess we'll see you when we do the deck tech on Dromar. So y'all be good. Stay safe. As Gavin would say, you got this.